Welcome back, everyone, to the Angels franchise on MLB The Show 24. We enter the episode five and a half games back from the Astros in the AL West. They are 23 and 9. We are only 17 and 14 after one full month in year three. The top storyline through the first month has been Brandon Drury's 12 home runs. I think he had 10 in the first three weeks. He's only got two of the last couple of weeks. But he's off to a great start batting-wise at 325 average, slugging over 700. He's not, not the only guy starting fast, though. Real Mudos come in for Logan Ohapia against right-handed pitchers, and he's played extremely well, also with um, on-base over 400. Edward Julian, very similar numbers as to Real Mudo. And Marco Luciano, in his first, you know, real stint here in the majors with the Angels, he is batting extremely well. 317, only three RBIs and 63 at-bats, but he is batting at the bottom of the order, so it's hard to get him some good hits there. Odell Herrera's playing pretty well, and so is Kyle Tucker. The only guys who are really struggling right now are Sterling Thompson and Gerardo Franco, while Logan Ohampi is kind of bouncing back after a slow start by him. But pitching-wise, John Means and Joe Ryan have been absolutely fantastic. Like Trinan's been really good, so has Jose Cisnero, but guys like Griffin Canning and especially Max Fried have really struggled out of the gates. And compared to last year's numbers for Max Fried, this is a huge difference. Huge. This week in scouting, we got seven third basemen scouted, four second basemen, and eight first basemen. So I think we'll stick with those central first basemen, but I do want to switch up the international second baseman and maybe go for a different area and then after this we will probably start to focus on some specific players to get a lot of knowledge on we end up sweeping the mariners and this was our first series against them this season and we sweep them four to one in both of the first two games and a five to four win to close it out Followed up by winning game one against the Tigers, and now in game two, Max Fried is trying to complete a complete game shutout. He's three outs away. Let's dive in and see if he can do it. This could be a big chance to get Max Fried back on track this season after a slow start. He's got to face Kerry Carpenter, who in his career is two for five against Max Fried. And he's already north of 100 pitches. That one upstairs for ball two. 2-1 two, pitch just on the outside, and it's a 3-1 count. You got Spencer Torkelson on deck, who has had some solid power to open up his season. He's got 10 home runs. That one's in there to keep the at-bat alive. Full count pitch. Swung upstairs. Carpenter climbs the ladder, and Freed prevents a base runner. Torkelson also 2 for 5 against Freed in his career with one home run in those five at bats. An even count. Trying to get the second out of the inning. That's just inside. Good eye by Torkelson. And he chased it low. Max Freed absolutely dealing here. He's got one more batter left to face. 9 Ks. Nearly through nine full innings. Justin Henry M Malloy spent a long time in AAA with the Tigers, several seasons down there. He's only batting 187 to start his 2026 campaign. He falls behind in the counts. Pitch 115 from Freed in there, and Malloy is in a hole. And there's your shutout. Max Free goes the distance. The Angels win their fifth straight game. And Max Freed is on his way to get him back on track. Gotta love it. Three strikeouts in the ninth to get the win. And we're now 22-14, and 14, off to a great start in the month of May. 
Our first loss comes in game three against the Tigers, losing three to six. And we would win the series, winning seven to two in the final game. And this one, only three guys failed to reach, or one guy failed to get on base, and that was Real Mudo, but O'Neill and Herrera did not get a hit, but both had at least one walk. Two home runs in this one from Nolan Shonowell. They were both solo shots. And John Means goes eight innings. Only two earned runs allowed. ERA is below 1.5 right now. He has seven wins and no losses. He beat the Astros 1-0. Sosa with two straight victories in his last two appearances. And another shutout win. And this time it was a group effort. That was Dominic Smith, by the way, with the lone RBI in that game. It was a, a, a solo home run. Now game two against the Astros. It's four to two Angels, but runners at the corners for Jose Altuve. Leclerc needs one out to win the game, and he gets it. We win it in the series. And through about a week and a half here in May, only one loss. And now we're 10 games over 500, just like that. We're going to start to uh, focus on getting some scouting profiles done. So we should be able to get both of these top closers, Angel Chavez and Tyler Wilkes, out of the way here in week 6 of 14. And we'll get some good percent on Brian Inman, who is supposed to go anywhere from the top 5 to maybe top 10. He's number 6 on our board right now, with these two other guys being top 3. So we'll try and get these guys out of the way here quickly. We dropped game three against the Astros, 0-3, to three, getting shut out by Christian Javier in a complete game shutout. He gets his fifth one of the season. And Max Fried picks up the loss despite only two runs allowed and in six innings. He's bringing his numbers down, though, which at least is a positive sign. But four hits for the offense in that one. He bounced back by taking down the Guardians, 8-3. to three. And in this one, we had... Home runs from Shanoel and Marco Luciano, plus doubles from Shanoel, Sterling Thompson, Kyle Tucker, and three other players. And Joe Ryan, three earned runs in six and a third. He's 5-0 and oh this year. We're going to dive into game two against the Guardians to try and complete the series win if we can take this game. We're back at home in Anaheim at Angel Stadium. And today, we got John Means on the mound, who, as we all know, has been absolutely fantastic to start 2026. I mean, look at these numbers, man. They are insane. 7 and 0, ERA at 1.48, 1.15 whip, over 54 innings pitched. Not a whole lot of strikeouts in there, but John Means having a great year. Jimenez leads off for Cleveland here in this game. He fouls off the first pitch. We'll see how deep John Means can go on this one and if he can give us performance that we've been expecting from how he started this season. Right now we do hold the first wild card seed, but it is only the middle of May, so not sure that really matters a whole lot. Right now, but Jimenez falls behind 0-2. It means to get him here. On the outside. Slider not chased. And got him looking. Strike three is called. We got Gabriel Arias batting second. Not too familiar with him. But he has spent his entire career so far with the Guardians. Must be a prospect out of their farm system. And he pops out. Shanoel comes in to get the second out. That brings up two-time Gold Glove winner Stephen Kwan. Who is typically one of the more consistent on both sides of the ball outfielders. He's been here for all five years of his career. And gets ahead 2-1 to one on means. In the air to left field, and it's going to sit down for an opposite field single. Kyle Tucker finds Julian as the cutoff man, but Juan gets on base. 
We're going for two. And Quan is out. Great throw by JT Real Mudo. Merrill Kelly making his ninth start of the season here today. He's going to face Edward Julian to lead things off. He is an absolutely stellar to open the season. Julian into left field. That one's going to stay fair. Go back to first. A leadoff single. Going to bring out Nolan Shawnoel here in a 1 1 count. And it's right into a double play. Oh, man. Base is cleared. Kyle Tucker batting third today, only batting 262 this season. Those numbers got to get better. He was brought in to be that game changing superstar caliber batter. And right now, you know, he's been solid, but. Hasn't been at a superstar level, I would say. No, that's up. And that one's outside. Merrill Kelly with ball four. Tucker draws the walk to keep it alive. And now it's Brandon Drury, who obviously was the hottest angel to start this season. And off of the third base glove, Drury beats the throw just in time. That's going to be an error at third base. That was Tyler Freeman with the error. That brings up Mickey Moniak, who's got a nine-game hitting streak coming in. There's ball one. Merrill Kelly not really showing much composure or control right now to open this game. He's got more balls than strikes. That was inside. Hammered and lifted deep in the air. It is caught right before the wall. He did like two more feet to leave. Lengthy at bat for O'Neill Cruz to start off the inning. It's already hit like four foul balls, and now it's a 2-2 counts. Outside. Finally got him to pop it up. At third base, Brandon Drury trying to reach across, and he's got it right outside of the Angels' bullpen. Or not bullpen, dugout. Rounded, uh, short, Luciano makes the throw in time. Slow start to the season for Teoscar Hernandez, who's only batted below 170 this season. Now Tyler Freeman, who I guess must have just gotten called up because he only has four total at-bats all year long and had that error in the first inning. Strike one. It was a first-round pick back in 2017 by Cleveland. And he flies out to center field here. Dorado Franco gets there to end the seconds. Hammered in the left field. That's going to be extra bases to lead off the second for JT Railmudo. It's definitely a batter-friendly zone right now from the umpire. That's just on the inside of the zone. Franco has not been great to start this year, but O'Neill gets the day off here, so Franco checks in. Hoping to find some offensive rhythm. Behind now, 1-2, trying to hopefully get Real Muto to third base. And behind the sinker. He's down. Odell Herrera smokes one into right field. Going to have to hold Real Muto at third base. But runners at the corners for the nine-spot batter, Marco Luciano. 
Just can't ground into a double play here. Otherwise, we should be able to bring the runner home. And he pops out. So oh, no. That's like the other thing that you can't do. Definitely can't tag up. Damn it, man. That was just late and he was completely underneath it. Edward Julian is our last chance to get on the board here. And he does the exact same thing. That's an absolute meatball, man. Come on. That's so unlucky. Three pitches, three strikes on George Valera. Second K for John Means. And now facing uh, one-time angel, Travis Starnauter. Is it darn no? I... I've seen some different pronunciations recently. I'm going to keep saying darn out until somebody tells me otherwise. But he is now on the Guardians. And he's batting pretty well to start this season. 278 average. A full count pitch. Swung on and that one is going to stay foul. Almost dropped in for an extra base hit. Instead, he strikes out. Two straight Ks for John Means. Another eight pitch at bat from the Guardians. And after going down 0 2, it's now a 2 2 count. Means approaching 50 here in the third. That's chased. The throw from Drury on target. We're going bottom three. We've gotten several on base in both innings so far against Kelly. Gotta start to bring those runs across home plates. And lining out to first base. Sean O'Mell just in front of the cutter. Blasted to center field. But not enough power behind it. Getting some really good pitches to swing on from Kelly, but just have not done enough with them. Brandon Drury, the last hope here in the third inning with two outs and nobody on. And Strory chases the changeup below the zone. Ah, oh, man. Unfortunate stuff so far. We'll break through eventually. We go top of the fourth. Rios at the plates. And he looks at ball four, so he's on base. And that brings up Steven Kwan. That is the only hit so far for the Guardians. And he sends one in the air, but Franco will track it down for the second outs. Ooh, strike two, beautiful sweeping curve in there to one of last year's Silver Slugger award winners. He falls behind 0-2 and fouls off the changeup. In the air, it smokes. That's going to be at least extra bases. It's out of here instead. O'Neal Cruz with a blast to right field. is fifth on the year. And the Guardians take the lead out of nowhere. That should be us. We go bottom four with one out. Errol Kelly pitching pretty well after allowing several base runners. Real Mudo grounds it right to him. We're out number two. And that's going to get through between first and second. Grotto Franco gets on base to keep the fourth alive. That's going to bring up Odell Herrera. Had that single earlier, trying to keep a perfect day going. Ball, that's 
Out runs even for Odell Herrera. That one's fouled off. It's now an eight pitch at bat for Herrera. And there's ball three. Full count. Can we keep the inning alive? That's going to get to the gap. We're going to send Franco home. And he should get there easily. An RBI double for Odell Herrera. And we are across home play for the first time in this one. Marco Luciano gets it through. We're going to send... Herrera home, and he's going to get there easily. We've tied the game up with the bottom of the order bats. An RBI for the young rookie prospect, Marco Luciano. So we're all tied up just under halfway through this game. There's a single for George Valera here in the fifth. He's on first base, only one out. Driver star now. Second appearance here in this one. Mean sits that one in there, and great throw again. Real Mudo got Valera for the second out. His second put out, I guess, of the game. Or is that considered an assist? Not sure what it's called, but either way. Two throwouts by Real Mudo here in this one. Gotta love that. And to win the inning, Darnold strikes out. We're going bottom five. Merrill Kelly stays in. He's only got just short of 70 pitches. This is the third time through the order for him. And it's going to slip right past Freeman at third base. Nolan Shonowell, even on late swings, is able to get on relatively easily. Kyle Tucker is retired. The changeup got him low. Third K for Merrill Kelly. Now it's Brandon Jury's third plate appearance of the game. Oh, just late on the sinker again. And Drury flies out to shallow rights. All right, last chance to advance Shawnawell. Nicky Moniak still going for that 10th straight game with the hits. Has yet to reach so far in this one. And he got hit on the elbow on the first pitch. So, he gets on base, and now it's JT Realmuto back at the plates. Oh, man. Timed it up so well. But, underneath it again. What is Loriano swinging at there? He was in front of that one by a country mile. Right now we got Blake Trinan and um, Cisnero warming up to come in for John Means here soon. I imagine we're trying to get through six with John Means for a potential quality start. There's the first out. Oh, strike to Jimenez chases the changeup low. He finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Third pitch from Means in the at-bat. It's taken for a ball. The delivery. In there looking at strike three. Jimenez is once again retired. These Guardians are chasing a lot of pitches here. 0-2 hole for Arias. And he fouls that one off to keep the at-bat going. Means approaching 90 pitches. He left the sweeping curve up, but no damage done. And through six, 
Means is only allowed two runs. That is going to be a quality start for him, even if we end up losing this game. Kelly comes out. Xavier Curry comes in for Cleveland. And these right now are the guys that got us on the board in the first place. The bottom of the order. Rado Franco leads off. Rounded to short, and Franco did not get a hold of the slider very well. That's gone! Herrera puts us in front. He's got all three. Well, two of our three RBIs here in this one. Odell Herrera with his sixth home run of the season. And we're on top for the first time here in this game. 412 feet out of here. Into center fields. And out is Luciano on another well-timed swing. That's the second out here in the inning. Edward Julian back out for the fourth time. And Julian is out on a diving play in right field. Ramon Laureano puts his body on the line. Wow! What a... Just perfect play. I mean, that's incredible. So Means will stay in for now, but we have two arms ready to go whenever he is going to come out. 2-2 two, two counts. Fouled off. Outside for ball three with... O'Neal Cruz on deck, who had that two-run blast in the fourth inning to get the Guardians on the board. Quan doing a good job of, once again, keeping this at-bat alive. A lot of foul balls by Cleveland here in this one. And that's off the plates. Quan takes his base. And that's going to be it for John Means. I thought he pitched very well in this one, and for some reason... We had Blake Trinan and Cisnero both warming up, and we bring in Andrew Wants instead. I don't understand. What's the point of warming up two arms that you're not even going to use? One man on, nobody out. Oh, wow. That was a dangerous slurve. The 2 2 delivery. Chopped, double play ball. Luciano can't make the throw in time. He got taken out by Stephen Kwan, heading for seconds. Replay of that one. This got completely undercut. So only one out and still a man on the bases. The Oscar Hernandez next up, trying to get his season back on track. That was a good pitch to do it with. They are keeping almost every at-bat alive with these foul balls. And that one's grounded down the third baseline. And are they going to get somebody home? No, they won't. Runners on second and third. The seventh double of the year for Hernandez. And the Guardians are threatening here with only one out. Freeman's behind in the counts. Can once get out of the jam. It's grounded foul. Almost every at bat so far, they usually fall behind, fall off a couple, and then make their big move. There's already been several foul balls in this one at bat alone. Freeman without a major league hit this year, and he looks at strike three. Nice cutter from Andrew Wants. Only one more out to get out of the inning. And he will not get the chance. Jonathan Lauasiga will get the opportunity instead. 
And he has had his fair share of struggles. And they will continue against the rookie, George Valera. And two runs will score. The Guardians are back on top. Why do we even take Andrew Wants out? He only had like 20 pitches. Let the guy get a few more batters under his belts. Now we're losing because of it. Travis Starr now behind 0 1. Starr now grounds it to shallow right field. And he's out, but damage done. We're losing once again off the bat of a rookie, no less. The offense has work to do against Sam Hentges. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name. I'm sure I am. Owen Shanawa leads it off against the Southpaw pitcher. And he strikes out. Slider off the plate, got him. Uh-oh, that's got some air underneath it. Does it have enough to leave? No, it doesn't. Come on. We're so close twice now from going deep. And leading off the eighth, another base hits off of Lawasiga. This guy has just been terrible to start the season. Come on, man. He's faced, what, three batters in total and has already given up two hits, including two runs off of the first one? Good lord. He came in out of the bullpen and did the exact opposite of what you want. Which I guess does happen a lot. But it might cost us this game. Strike two to Jimenez. And strike three. Got him. Awasiga misses off the plate, and this time they steal with Loriano, and that's their first successful stolen base of the game. And they got a guy in scoring position with a Rios up 3-0 in the counts. Awasiga is just giving me nothing right now. The pitch is going to sit in center field. Luriano heading for home, and it's 5-3 to three Guardians. Lawasiga has completely sold the game. Now we got to face this guy, Nick Sandlin. Are you kidding? Nicky Moniak still looking for that base hit. Leading off the 8th. That's low. Now late on the sinker, I'm going to be sick. 2-2 two -two count for Mickey Moniak. And he gets hit again. Come on, guys. What are we doing here? We'll take the base. Grounded. Pass first base. Real Mudo once again reaches. Well, Franco has batted 313 with runners in scoring position. Did not realize he was doing so well in that situation, but at the plate again. Got to come through. Oh, the slider just rolled over it and away out in front. Another 2 2 count. Why did I swing at that one? That's one to forget. One batter later, it's Odell Herrera, who's 3-for-3 three three today, has two RBIs plus the home run. Can he do some more damage here? He's a triple shy of the cycle. I doubt he's going to get one, but there's always a chance. Behind that one. Oh, did not get enough power behind that at all. Felt that one off the bat, and we can't even tag up off that either. 
Cannot leave any more on base, man. We already left seven. It's two men on right now, and Luciano's gonna bring at least one home. Runners at the corners. Luciano is second RBI of the game, I believe. At least his second base hits. Julian lines out to third. I thought that was going to get through. We got one run back. And one inning left to walk it off. Why are we bringing in Jose Soriano? Bring in somebody who's been better. I don't understand the bullpen decisions in this game. Considering it's very close. Why are we, why are we bringing in guys that have struggled all year long? Instead of guys that have been good in these kinds of situations. Bring in Jose Leclerc here in the ninth inning. I don't even care. I'm planning for a walk off in the ninth anyways. Instead, we got one of our worst pitchers of the season out there right now. Trying to prevent extra runs. Cruz with the... Uh, Inside swing, got jammed on it. He's out. Hernandez can't get it by third base. Brandon Drury, a great diving play at the hot corner. Last batter up for Cleveland is Tyler Freeman. Looking at strike one. Even count delivery. End of right fields. And Moniak is there to bring it in. We're going bottom nine, our last chance to win this game or force extras. And these are the guys to do it with. All right. We have done this before against Class A. Can we do it again in 2026? Leading off. It's the first baseman, Nolan Shanoel. Grounded, it's in shallow right field, and he's out. Man, almost got there. Tucker has gone just one for eight so far in the series. Had a couple of fly balls that nearly left. Can he get at least on base in this at bat? That one is smoked to the left center gap, but again, I don't think it has enough. We've got one out left to at least tie the game. Brandon Drury, 0 for 4. Only one home run in the past two to three weeks. Lifted to center field, and this game is over nine left on base by the angels that is just way too many disappointing ending to this game we could have won it Well, it can't win all of them. And we end up losing the series in extras in game three. Come on, man. And we have our only off day of the month. We're just going to sim through it. Matt Strom is finally back. All right, so considering that Soriano and Lawasiga both are really struggling right now, I think we're going to sit one guy behind the, the uh, setup roll and then... We'll sit the other one, probably Soriano, as the second middle relief spot. But we got to put in Matt Strom, I think, as the top substitute, or not substitute, setup option. Because he was pitching well when he got hurt. He only had a couple innings under his belt. But I think anybody is better right now than Lawasiga, who had a horrible showing right there against Cleveland.
Here's our first look at some prospects and their scouting profiles, starting with Angel Chavez, an 85 to 95 potential closer with a four seamer, a curveball, and a changeup, up to 98 on that fastball as well. He's got really high strikeout per nine, although the pitch control is fairly low. I think there is a lot to like about Angel Chavez here. But I doubt, I doubt he even goes in the top 10 picks. That's just not where closers usually go. Then you got Tyler Wilkes, who seems to be a lot more well-rounded, although it has a lot lower strikeout per nine, but has fairly high pitch break. You could go with either guy and you would be happy with either one, I think, because both guys have that high potential and could probably reach the majors within two seasons. So... Both guys look pre pretty solid there. They got Brian Emmon up to about 40%. And there is a lot to like defensively about him. Offense needs a, lo a lot of work, though. It's all below average. We take the first two games against Tampa, and we take the series. In the game three, we take it three to two for a nice sweep, and we are now 11 games over 500 entering a four-game series against the Baltimore Orioles before a three-game road series against the Mets. So a week of road games for the Angels. Gonna go through these ones really quickly. 13 to six in game two. What happened here? Everybody got at least one hit. Odell Herrera, four for five. With the home run, O'Neal hit one. Jury and Shana will also tack on. A couple of long balls. Soul Seth hit for about three runs across five innings pitched. They also got plenty of home runs from guys like Jackson Holiday, but we got runs off of every pitcher except for Felix Bautista, including nine in the ninth or seven in the ninth inning of that game as well. We lose the third game two to six, and we tie things up. To leave the series two to two, five to three in that last game. And now against the Mets, top of the seventh, down two to one, and we end up losing eight to six in that first game. So let's jump in here. We're down by one against the Mets on the road, top of the ninth. O'Neill, a big chance to get us on the board and tie things up. He's already hit one home run today. Can he bring home some more runs to keep the game alive? Got to face Phil Bickford. That's off the plate for ball one. And you'll behind one, two. Bronco at second, Herrera at first. And popped up. On the changeup. Two outs. I think that's gonna be it for Bickford. I think he's coming out. Oh yeah, well, here we go. Edwin Diaz at City Fields. Here we go. Dominic Smith is our last chance. Lefty on righty. Grounded off the third base glove, and we should have everybody safe. Bases juiced. We got lucky there. We're gonna bring in a pinch runner. It's gonna be JT Realmuto who can play first base. Smith playing first base here in this one, so Realmuto comes in to pinch run. He's got a lot more speed. And now at the plates. It is Edward Julian. A huge opportunity right here. Uh-oh. Late in the air, and the game's over. The Mets win the game and the series. We get two more players fully scouted, including Brian Inman. He's got some fairly high potential especially defensively and on the base paths. The offense will require a lot of work early on if you draft him. 
He's fifth on the overall boards, 28th on hours, and he is a switch hitter, so that is a pretty key factor. And then one of our top relief options, Mark Bulk. Really high potential. Overall, is probably going to be at a pretty good starting level for a guy coming right out of high school. And he looks to be really good across the board. And Walker Jenkins is finally back off of the injured list, so... He will return in AAA. We end up preventing a series sweep against the Mets, and now we have a four-game series against the Mariners, and a three-game series at home against the Rangers to close out the month of May. We just beat Seattle in Game 4 to make it a 2-2 two two series, so nobody wins it. Now we got the three-game stretch against the Rangers to close it, and they are only 19-37. and 37. They have really fallen off the map here after the month of April. 5-4 to four game, and we come back and win 6-5 to five in the first one. And on May 30th, another close game. Leclerc trying to close things out, and he blew the save. Amazing. Got a couple guys across a couple of different rounds nearly fully scouted, including Steven Mercado. who's a third baseman, probably going to go in the first two rounds. Is also very good defensively, but also has some pretty nice power. The contact needs work, but he's got pretty average power starting out at only 18 years old. This guy could be a really solid option. He could play third, first, or right field. You've also got Tyrone Schmitz who is kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Can play second and short. Would probably be a better fit as like a fourth or fifth round pick, maybe. And then Rob Willie, a second baseman that can't play any other position. He's got a lot of speed and stealing. Defense is really solid, and so is his contact, especially against righties. This guy re reminds me a lot of Nolan Shonowell in terms of the plate vision, the discipline, and the on-base ability. So we have split the first two games against the Rangers. Got one game left to win the series. Definitely don't want to drop this one in a Max Freed starts. And it's 3-0 Angels. Max Freed going for another shutout. And we end up winning it 4-3 in a close win. Did Max Fried pitch the entire game? I doubt he did, and he did not. He came out after allowing two runs in the eighth inning, but we hold on to win thanks to a run in the bottom of the eighth. Home runs for Odell Herrera and Edward Julian, both of them solo shots. To wrap things up, some minor league updates from the month of May. Looks like Garvin, Alston, and Double A had a rough month. You steal Cabrera, one of the guys that we acquired via trade before the year started, had a rough month in AAA, an ERA over six with eight walks over 24 innings. While Deshaun Knowles in AA hit the ball extremely well with a 340 average. Jordan Adams was pretty damn solid in AAA. And then Robert Carlick continues to be one of our elite AA pitchers. 26 strikeouts and 35 innings pitched during May, and Sam Bachman in AAA as a reliever. Pretty solid stuff out of the bullpen. We find ourselves fifth in runs after two months of the season. We're also top five in home runs with 88. Top five in RBIs. The offense seems to be... Still doing pretty well for themselves. Fourth in total bases. Edward Join is still playing like a superstar. Over 1,000 OPS. Slugging over 600. Average still at 330. This guy's an absolute uh, machine. And with Shawnowell, pretty similar story. Brandon Jury at a 920 OPS. Odell Herrera having a really awesome season. 10 home runs, 33 RBIs. But, uh... Looks like Luciano has definitely kind of gone cold as of late, but he's still overall hitting the ball pretty well with a 264 average. But one of the storylines unfolding recently is Kyle Tucker. Have we been scammed? 
His ratings are going down. His overall is going down at 29 years old. And he's having by far the worst year of his career since his first season where he only had 28 games played. He's got to fix this before I start to think that we made a huge mistake with this contract. He's making 32 mil a season. He's got to be doing better than this. Looks like he's been batting 252 against righties and only 224 against lefties despite having better contact and better power against left-handed pitchers. Only nine home runs for him, by the way. And he was supposed to be, like, the main home run guy for us. With runs in scoring position, he has batted only 246, despite having 99 clutch. I'm not sure what more I can do to get this guy the best opportunities. I mean, I can't take him out of our lineup, because that would just take away a huge piece of run creation. He's got all these quirks. You just got to figure things out, I guess. That's all I got. Meanwhile, Logan Ohapi continues to kind of struggle. Only batting 228. Hasn't really figured things out. He is slugging, you know, relatively well. But the on-base is low. The average is low. Until those get better, he will not be facing both kinds of pitchers. We have a nice cushion between us and the Mariners for second place in this division. Now only eight games back from the Astros. And we are right now in the wild card as the top wild card team. But a couple of teams are only a handful of games back. The Guardians, Tigers, and Mariners are all in the running. There's still a lot of baseball left to play. That'll do it, folks. Please like the video, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the, the uh, next one. Probably going to start to th slow things down here in year three and start to focus a bit more on the middle part of the year. But we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching and take care.